Hit Film Sensei here. Today in this video, we are going to talk about how to rig engine lights to a spaceship. So here's the thing. You don't actually have to rig engine lights. It can be any lights you, that you like, okay? Uh, but this is how you're going to do it. Maybe after that we'll do uh, a little bit more in terms of like actually rigging the whole uh, spaceship. So I'm going to use a Viper, uh, the old Battlestar Galactica Viper from 1978. That's the one that I grew up with as a kid. And I'm going to use a Sphere as the engine. Let's take a look at these, okay? Let me bring up the properties here. This is my Viper. It's not a bad looking model. I got it for free uh, and it'll, it'll do. And then the sphere itself, we're going to bring up the properties on that one. It's just a sphere. It's uh, actually, I think it's a planet sphere. I am going to make one change though. And that is, uh, I am going to make it completely white because I'm going to use an auto lens flare to do the, uh, uh, to do the lights, so I need it to be white so that it's bright enough that it will register as the lens flare, all right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new composite shot, and I'm just going to make this 10 seconds. It doesn't need to be that long, and I'll click OK. Um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to drag my Viper into the shot here, okay? Now, it is currently two-dimensional, and you'd think to yourself, oh, you know, I'm going to make this three-dimensional, right? Yeah, but you don't want to do that. Uh, instead, what you want to do is you want to assign that Viper to a three-dimensional object, a point. So I'm going to go new layer, point layer. I'm going to say make it three-dimensional, and yes, I want to add the camera, okay? And then under the Viper, you'll go to model Viper and transform from that new point. Okay, and I'm going to rename the new point the Viper Control Point, okay? And now you'll see that even though that's a two-dimensional model sitting there, if you were to start messing around with a three-dimensional point, you can see, wow, you know, actually, that is like a three-dimensional object. Even though it's not, it's two-dimensional, okay? All right, now, the Viper has exactly three engines here, all right? So what's going to happen is, is that I'm going to place a three-dimensional point at each one of these three engines, okay? So I'm going to go to the front view first, and I'm going to say new layer, a point layer, and this point is going to be the top engine point, okay? And I am going to grab that point, all right, and I'm going to make it three-dimensional, and then I am going to bring it up to the middle of that engine, which I think is going to be about right there, roughly, okay? Right now, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that point, and we're going to call this one left engine, okay? And we're going to bring it down and over, and I'm going to center it in the left engine point, okay? All right, now I'm going to duplicate that one. We're going to call it right engine point, and I'm going to bring it over to the right side, okay? All right, now, and then you say, well, now, wait a minute. The problem here is uh, is that these are probably not actually on those engines in, in Z space. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the left side, and I'm going to say, oh, yep, there it is, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all three of these together, and I'm just going to slide them all over, okay? Whoops. Let me try that again. I'm going to grab all three of these I'm going to grab them and slide them over so they're all at the engine level, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and parent that to the main Viper control point, okay? So that way, if I move the Viper control point, then those three points will move also just like they're supposed to, okay? So now I'm going to take my sphere model and I'm going to drop it in above the Viper model. And it's quite the big and lovely sphere. Sphere. The first thing I want to do is, is I want to go ahead and turn off Illuminated, okay? Because I won't want that, all right? As I don't want the actual lighting to affect those spheres, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to twirl open the sphere model, and I'm going to start by calling this one top, because that one will be the top one. And I am going to work on scaling this down a little bit, okay? So that it's more like the size of the engine, 
Okay, and I am going to transform it from the top point. I'm going to go ahead and zero out all these so it's sitting right on the top point. And I tell you what, I'm going to go back to the front view so that I can move in here a little bit and I can scale this exactly to the size that I want it to be. Let's go. Yeah, 12 looks good. Doesn't that look good? I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to duplicate that top one and I'm going to call it left. And see, I have more than one model in this model layer. Isn't that cool? I'm going to twirl it open and I'm going to... Um, have that one transform from the left. And again, I want to zero out the positions so that they are all together. And then I'm going to duplicate the left one and I'm going to call it right engine. Okay. And I am going to transform it from the right. And again, I need to zero out all the position numbers. So now we have the three engine lights, essentially they're spheres, okay? And if I go back to the active camera, and then you'll see if I start moving the rotation of the y-axis on the main Viper control point, that those three spheres are moving and they're exactly where they need to be, okay? In, in the virtual space of our uh, model here, okay? But the problem is, of course, what? There is no occlusion going on. Occlusion means blocking off, right? So you're you're not able to block off the engines, okay? How do you get that to happen? I racked my brains out over this for a long time. I couldn't figure out how to get it done until I finally gave up and I went to the men among boys, the man among boys of the hit film forums, and that is Mike Miller with Hit Film University, tri -M, as he is known on the forums. And I said, Mike, how do you do this? And he said, oh, it's really easy. All you have to do is go to the sphere layer itself, and over here in the controls tab, you have an extra um, thing here. It's It starts here at World Transform, but over here it says Layer Properties. You twirl that open, Make sure that include in depth map is checked and depth source layer is the Viper. And now look at that. Now, if you were, and that's the secret right there. And boy, if he had never told me that, I'd still be working on this. So, uh, you know, shout out for Mike right on that one. Check this out now. When I move this thing around, it is occluded properly or blocked off by the uh, Viper correctly. See how that works? All right. So now you see, well, how do I get them to light up and glow? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add a um, auto lens flare or auto lens flare, auto light flare effect onto the spheres themselves. Okay. And look, it's glowing, but only one of them is glowing. Why is that? Well, if you twirl it open and you look at hotspot generation, you'll see that it says only give one maximum of one flare. So guess how many flares we're going to use? Three, because we have three engines here. Okay. Now that's kind of bright. So I'm just going to knock down the intensity a bit here. Just enough. I, you know, and you would, this is where you get to have fun and play with these things. You could adjust the scale. You could adjust the colors and things like that. In fact, I think I will. You could change the whole flare to any flare that you want. I'm going to leave this flare because I don't want to get too complicated here, but I'm going to change the color. I want it to be more of an orangish color, you know, just because I think that would look a little better with this particular model. I think if it was an X-Wing or, or a TIE Fighter or some other kind of a model, it might be a little different. So now if you were to rotate this, oh, wow, that's really cool. It even creates lens flares and things like that. Isn't that sweet? Yes, it is. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and light this scene. All right, so I'm going to do a real simple lighting. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm going to put a light on the scene, uh, and I'm just going to move the light maybe 2,500, 500, and then I'm going to duplicate that light, and the second one I'm just going to put exactly opposite of that. This is basic, but it works. Negative 2,000, negative 500, negative 500. Okay, so now my lighting is set up. This is very simple and basic lighting, but it, it, it will do the job. Uh, and if I kind of rotate this, oh, whoops, sorry, wrong rotation. If I rotate this on the Y-axis, then you can see 
that that looks that looks pretty sweet it looks okay all right so let's have it fly through space shall we yeah let's do that all right zero all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna have it fly um you know backwards and forwards what i'm gonna do is take my camera right here and under layer properties in the control tab i'm gonna have that camera align towards a layer and the layer i'm gonna have it aligned towards will be the viper control point okay so wherever the viper goes the camera's going to follow it okay um let's go ahead and move the camera um offline about 2000 pixels okay um and then i'm just going to very easily this is going to be a simple thing but basically i'm just going to change the z-axis here uh basically if i just slide this backwards uh this way it'll go that way and forwards will go that way so let's just go negative 5000 here we'll go ahead and set a keyframe we'll go to the end and we'll make it 5000 uh boom okay uh, oh wait you know what those are backwards we're going to go uh this is actually going to be negative 5000 sorry and we'll make this one 5000 all right so now as it kind of flies through space, okay, we got to add a background so that there's something, you know, for it to look at. So I'm going to just real quickly do that, create a plane. We'll call it the stars here. Uh, it will also be two-dimensional, just like the other ones. Uh, let's go ahead and add a fractal noise effect to the stars. And then we will twirl it open. Preset will be star field. Um, but if I want the stars to actually move with the camera, I'm going to have to add a 360 video viewer effect underneath the fractal noise. Uh, that makes the stars look really junky, though. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change the scale to about 25%, maybe one scale ratio, just like that. Uh, and so now if we go, you can see how that's moving and you can see how that glow is happening. You could make that glow brighter or, you know, less, whatever. But that's a pretty cool looking, you know, shot right there. And it only took a few minutes, right? So in a nutshell, that's how you do it. Again, the super secret sauce for this is in terms of making these two-dimensional and wrapping them onto three-dimensional points. And then under the sphere, right, the, the key here is depth source layer the viper and then the proper occlusion will occur and you can actually do that if you had the viper flying into a battle star then you could occlude the viper into the battle star and it would be the same right so you you could you could multi-level tier this kind of stuff and it's really cool so Feel free to play around with this. If you have any questions on this, uh, remember this is in the pro version. Um, you know, ask ask away in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, again, thanks to Mike for helping me out on this. And hey, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday and Monday, and thanks for your support.